Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a custom controller like this one. I'm using here a pretty nice and cute goose and we are creating a point and click custom controller. As you can see, we have an indicator where our goose will go. We are also avoiding obstacles using the nav mesh of Unreal Engine. So if you want to know how you can easily create this custom controller and use any kind of character, maybe you have a custom character that you want to move it with a point and click technique, this is the right video for you. So let's get started and create this controller. If you enjoyed any of the videos on this channel and if you are a fan, could you do me a quick favor and hit that subscribe button? Surprisingly, 85% of the people who watched my videos are unsubscribed. Your quick action of hitting that subscribe button will support this channel and as it grows, we will be able to share even more free content with you. All right, so the first steps. First, you need a character. Right now, I just bought this goose from Sketchfab. Link is in the description if you want to buy it. It contains animation, it contains texture, and it has physical object, a skeletal object. So I'm just gonna use this goose, uh, use any character that you want for the custom character. The next thing that I've created is the location circle. This is available also in the description below. You can straight download it for free. And the material for the location circle is very simple. I'm using an unlit material. I'm using a vector color, which is blue, multiplying it by 50 so I can give a little bit of emission. And I've created a transparent texture, which is a circle one, and I've connected the alpha to the opacity. If you don't want to create it, just go and download it. And if I drag and drop it onto my scene, you can see that this location circle we're going to be using for the effect of where we clicked. The first step is to create a blueprint for the location circle. So right click, go to the blueprint cross and create an actor. I'm going to name it BP location, location, circle two, and I'm going to double click. So the first thing that you want, you want to add a static mesh. So I'm going to add the static mesh and I'm going to name it location circle. And in the static mesh, I'm going to search for location circle. I'm going to select it. And right now we have our location circle over here into this blueprint. Okay. I'm going to compile and save. Then in the event graph, what we need to do is when the event begin play, we need to delay over here and I'm going to delay by 0.5. So we are showing the location circle. And then from the complete, we're going to destroy the actor. And this will be the effect of the location circle when we clicked. So I'm going to compile and save and we are ready with the effect. The next thing that we want to create is a blend space and animation blueprint. So let's create first the blend space. Right click, search here, blend, and add the animation blend space. I'm going to use this one, not the legacy one. Click on it and select the skeleton that you want. I'm going to select the goose and I'm going to name it blend space goose 2. I'm going to double click on it. And this is the blend space that I have. Okay. So here we need to drag two animations. The first one will be my idle and I'm going to drag it here on the horizontal axis. And the second one will be my run and I'm going to add it to the other end of this axis. And when I start switching, holding control on my keyboard, you can see how my goose is start running and stopping. I'm going to save it. And for the horizontal axis, I'm going to name it speed over here because we're going to control the speed from here. When we start running, we're going to be over here. And when we stop going into idle, we're going to be zero. So this is 100 speed and this is zero speed. So we work with these values. The next thing is I want to add a little bit of smoothing time because I want the animations to go from one to another with a little bit of smoothness, not instantly. So I'm going to put 0.1 and I'm going to make the smoothing linear and save it. This is everything for our blend space. The next thing is we need to create an animation blueprint for our goose. So right click and search for anim and select animation blueprint. I'm going to select the goose again, create it, and I'm going to name it ABP, which stands for animation blueprint goose underscore two. I'm going to double click on it. And in this animation blueprint, what we need to do is we need to drag and drop our blend space. And here in our blend space, we have speed. We need to connect the animation pose to the result and we need to create a variable, which will be our speed. So I'm going to create a variable, make it a float and name it speed. Okay. I'm going to connect it to speed and we are ready with the animation graph setup, compile and save. And you can see that we are now in the idle state. 
Now let's move to the event graph. Here in the event graph, we need to do a few things. We need to set the speed. So I'm going to drag and set the speed. And from the update animation, we are setting the new speed. But we need to get this speed from the character. So I'm going to try get pawn owner. So we are getting the owner, the character itself. And we are getting the velocity, get velocity. So getting the velocity. And after we get the velocity, we need to make it a vector length. So search for vector length. And this vector length will update our speed. So this is how we get the speed from our character and update it here in the animation blueprint. Compile and save. If you enjoy the content and wish to support the channel, or if you're interested in accessing the files for this project and everything that I've created so far, including the landscape auto material, the water shader, the fog material, the blueprint mega kit, the interactive water system, the interactive foliage system, the PCG path, the PCG ditch, the PCG forest pro, and every other tool and shader I've developed and will continue to create in the future, visit my Patreon page at patreon.com slash cgdealers. By selecting a tier, you can acquire the assets you want while supporting the channel and the ongoing development of new tools and enhancement of the current tools. For those who simply want to support the channel, I've introduced a YouTube membership option. By joining, you will get access to our private Discord lobby where I'm most active, providing priority support. Please note, this membership doesn't include access to download tools, shaders, system, blueprints or any other content like in Patreon. Enroll in this membership if you don't want to pay for Patreon but want to donate a Coca-Cola or a coffee. This support helps me stay fueled and continue creating videos for free for you guys. Thank you so much. Now let's deep dive into the video. The final one is to create the blueprint for our goose. So right click blueprint class, select a character and name it BP goose underscore two. Of course, first we need to work in the viewport. What we need to add over here in the capsule component, I'm going to select it and I'm going to add a spring arm. And this spring arm will hold my camera, so I'm going to select it and add a camera to it. The second thing, let's select the character mesh and search for our goose. So select the goose. I'm just going to move it a little bit down so it fits our capsule collider. And then for the animation class, we're going to select the animation blueprint goose number two. And we have our goose over here working. Compile and save. Now we need to make few setups for the camera. First, we need to do, select the character movement and search for orient rotation. And this orient rotation to, to movement, I'm going to check through. So our camera will start orating to the movement. Then we're going to go to the spring arm. And in the spring arm, I'm going to select use pound control rotation. And let's go to the quas default and search for yaw and disable the use control rotation of yaw. Compile and save. And this is the setup for our camera. Now we need to set up some values for the spring arm and the camera to look good, the angle. So I'm going to select my spring arm, select min minus 45 for the rotation and minus 90 over here. The next thing is I'm going to select the target arm length of 800 and I'm going to put for the socket offset 400. Those numbers I just tested out and they're working pretty fine for me. And finally, to set up the camera, I'm going to select it and for location, I'm going to put 8 to 1. Here I'm going to put 652 and for the Z 230. I'm going to rotate it minus 50 and I'm going to rotate it on this minus 90. I'm going to compile and save and we are ready with our camera setup. Now let's continue with the fun part, creating the exact logic behind it. So the first thing we need to create a few events. So I'm going to create custom events and this event will be show mouse cursor. And this event will show the cursor of the mouse. And Unreal already have a boolean for that. So I'm going to search for show mouse cursor. And I'm going to disable the context sensitive. From the player controller, I'm going to set the mouse cursor. Connect it over here. And the target should be our player controller. So right click, get player controller. Getting the player controller and connect it to the target. So this is our first event that we need. Compile and save. And let's create the second event. And let's say this custom event will be my goose movement. Okay. The first thing that we need to do is we need to create a line trace by channel. So this one line trace by channel selected. 
and connect it to my line trace. This will say the start position of the goose and the end position of the goose. And right now we need to get the player controller again. And from this player controller, we need to convert the mouse location to the world space. So from, from here, I'm gonna mouse location to world space. So when we click, we need to know where is the starting point and the ending point. World location will be my starting point. I'm gonna clean it up like that. And for the world direction, I'm just gonna add the starting point to a multiplication with an integer. So I'm gonna multiply here and I'm gonna convert this to integer and I'm gonna multiply to 5000 and connect it over here to my add component. So we're adding the world direction with the world location, which is the start and connecting it to the end point. So far so good. So we have this line trace, we have this connection and the next we need the result and we need to move our goose. So from this, I'm gonna create a branch. So when it's true, I'm gonna spawn an actor, spawn actor from class. Here we're gonna spawn our circle. So let me search for BP, BP location circle number two. And our circle will need some information how to spawn it. So I'm gonna break the spawn transformation, split the structure, and I'm gonna split the spawn transformation location. Again, split the structure. Here for the spawn transform scale, I'm gonna put 0.3 because I want it to be a little bit smaller. And for the transformation, we need to break the result. So from out hit, we're gonna break hit result. And from this one, from the location where we are going, we need to break the vector, break the vector. And we're gonna have the exact location by X, Y, and Z. So we can place our circle there. So I'm gonna connect X, I'm gonna connect Y, and I'm gonna put three for my Z axis. I'm putting three for my Z axis because I don't want to have Z fight between the circle and the surface and what i mean by that is if i drag this you can see how it's flickering that's why i want to be a little bit up from this perspective you're not going to indicate this but this will help us not to have z fight between those two geometries okay so right now we have our circle working and finally we need to move our character so i'm gonna use already uh, created function in unreal simple move to location so we are moving to location and what we want to move is our player controller so i'm gonna copy and paste it over here connect it here and we want to move it to this location just like that i'm gonna queue and i'm gonna compile and save so right now we are ready with the two events and what we need to do we need to call the events so first on the event begin play we're gonna show the mouse cursor and then on the left mouse button, when we start clicking left mouse button, we're gonna execute the goose movement event. And now we are ready to test, compile and save, close it, open our character, drag and drop our goose, then go to the search, search for possession. And let me possess as player zero and let me hit play. And as you can see, our goose is moving on the opposite direction. And this is because we rotated it, which is a little bug. And now let's fix this. And the other thing is that we are not seeing our cursor. Okay, so let's go back and fix this. So about our cursor, we need to check this to show it. And then in the viewport, you can see that our goose is rotated 90 degrees to face the arrow direction. So I'm going to put minus 90, compile and save. And now everything should work. Let's test this out again. Now we see our cursor and now our goose is moving. So you can apply this technique to any kind of uh, custom character that you want. And if you face a problem like this with the camera, let me show you, colliding with the objects over here, what you need to do is you need to disable the collision on your spring arm. So double click on your goose, go to the spring arm, search for collision and disable do collision test. Compile and save. And let me show that this is not happening anymore. Okay, so right now everything works pretty, pretty good. So this is pretty much for this video. If you like it, don't forget to subscribe. See you in my next video. And before I end up this video, I want to let you know that I've created a Blueprints Masterclass for Unreal Engine 5. It is available right now on Udemy. 
So if you want to expand your knowledge and not just only create art pieces in Unreal Engine 5, but create some characters, create some game logic, my course is the perfect solution from beginners to intermediate Unreal Engine 5 users. The course itself is 15 hours long and it has all the foundation that you need to kickstart your blueprint knowledge in Unreal Engine 5. So if you want to keep evolving yourself beyond just creating art in Unreal Engine 5, enroll now.